when I first read the script, I was so surprised that it was a true story. I mean, it, it truly is incredible. Hey there, it's Kristen, and today we are chatting with Miguel Angel Garcia, who stars in Netflix's new film, Blue Miracle. Can you tell us about Blue Miracle and the character Moko that you play? Blue Miracle is a true story about a 2014 um, orphanage that uh, unfortunately got into a little bit of uh, trouble because of a hurricane. And I play Moko, who is one of the boys who is not in the orphanage, but um, decides to eventually kind of join the team um, out of his own personal reasons. But he's a little bit of a street kid that, that join, ends up joining. You know, to bring a true story to life, that must be really fascinating because, you know, there's a lot of real life places that you can kind of pull influence from. So what was it kind of like bringing to like this true story. When I first read the script, I was so surprised that it was a true story. I mean, it, it truly is incredible. Um, and I did a lot of research. I was watching a lot of YouTube videos, reading a lot of articles and newspaper articles that I had found and looking at a lot of photography from um, that 2014 event. And um, it was absolutely incredible being able to draw from real people. Uh, I think it's such a gift as an actor when you're able to actually draw from real people that are in the world and be able to to take those characters on and, and represent them. You're working alongside Jimmy Gonzalez and Dennis Quaid, who yeah. have had such great careers in the industry. So what what is it like working with them? Did you learn anything while you were on set from them? Jimmy and Dennis are incredible actors. And beyond that, they're just great people. Um, I learned a lot from them from our conversations. I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one conversations with them while being on set at lunch and dinners and whatnot. But I think where I learned the most from them is from watching them and being around them on set and seeing that level of professionalism um, and their attitude towards the work. You know, they're, uh, they're obviously very professional and know exactly what to do and get on the dot. Uh, at certain moments and bring the best out of both crew and cast uh, when needed. But they also enjoy what they do and they have a, a ton of fun. So those two lessons I really love to take forward within my career. What you hope that people take away from Blue Miracle as a whole, but also, you know, when it comes to Latino representation in media. In terms of kids or adults, I really think this movie has to do with uh, perseverance, love and, um, you know, commitment to to trying to achieve a goal. And if you have those three in the mix, then you are able to achieve what you love and what you want to do in life. And, you know, having an almost all Latino cast is incredibly inspiring for me. This is why I want to do this career. I want to be able to represent people who have been underrepresented uh, within our community. And, you know, we haven't had a lot of opportunities just to tell our truth. Um, and having producers on that were also Latino is a huge deal. It's not only the actors, but it's the, it's also the crew and the producers and the people high up. So um, I definitely think it's the right step in the in, in the in the direction of representing the Latino community and, and sharing stories of all um, ethnic groups. I think that's incredible that um, you know beyond just you know who we're seeing on screen, even the people behind yeah. the scenes. Our, our Latinos yes. and bringing this story to life and, you know, telling such an inspirational story for the Latino community. Additionally, you know, you have an upcoming ABC pilot, you're writing. Yeah. What can you tell us about what else you have going on? Right now I am in Atlanta. I just finished shooting a pilot here. Um, and that's incredibly exciting. It's also an all Latino story. Um, and that's, like I just said, incredibly exciting. And the cast and crew have been Absolutely incredible while I've been here. Um, and yeah, I, I write a lot. So I'm also working on those kinds of things. I'm going to be back in Los Angeles and I'll be shooting an indie project called Die Like a Man um, for the month of July, which is an, an incredible story by Eric Nazari and that I'm incredibly excited to explore and, and uh, share with the world as well. So um, I'll be back in LA soon doing working on that. Sounds like you're very, very busy. And you're going to be a published author soon as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm looking for December of this this coming December. I, I'm working with a program where we're writing books. And uh, I have one that i am just been going on and on about. Um, it's about a, a father and son who live in a, a small city called Torre Vieja in Spain. Um, so it's a story about trauma and loss and... Uh, trying to figure out what you want in life.
it seems like a lot of the projects you're working on are, you know, really focused on like the Latino experience. Yeah, hundred um, percent. You know, I, I I credit that to my parents who were always very aware of our background and and really like to bring our cultures and values to the forefront when it came to growing as a family and also being very vocal about who you are and where you're from and and what's right and what's wrong um my mother would take my sister and i to the women's march in washington dc as long as the latino marches in washington dc every single year since i had grown up so uh definitely a family full, filled with activists and and people who really want these stories out there and, and, and want to represent the community when, when it's needed the most. If you like this one, you can check out more of my interviews right over here and I'll catch you in the next one. See ya.